TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Israeli Special Operations Forces apprehended dozens of terror suspects as the prolonged counter-terror operation Waves Breaker persists. China and Iran highlight their deepening relations in the face of international complexities. The Iranian Foreign Ministry warns that any new sanctions imposed against it by the United States would further impede on Western efforts to revive the 2015 nuclear agreement. IDF, ISA, or Shin Bet, and Israel Police Special Operations Forces conducted counterterrorism activities in a number of locations throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the troops operated in 39 residences of individuals suspected of involvement in the Hamas terrorist organization and other terrorist activity. Meanwhile, during the counterterrorism activity, a violent riot was instigated during which dozens of Palestinian rioters hurled rocks and Molotov cocktails at IDF soldiers who responded with riot dispersal means. And while no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops, overnight a total of 13 wanted suspects were apprehended and transferred to security forces for further questioning. It is important to know that over the course of the past month, Several dozens of Palestinian terror suspects were arrested as part of the prolonged counter-terror operation Waves Breaker. And while the Israeli defense establishment continues to root out terror elements, which festered over the years throughout the so-called West Bank territories, the IDF published late last week footage purporting to show Hamas military infrastructure, which it placed in close proximity to civilian infrastructure including schools, universities, mosques, and commercial factories. While Hamas naturally denied Israel's proven allegations, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz, after concluding a tour of Israel's southern sector, highlighted the imperative for a clear international response without delay. <laughs> חמאס יורה מתוך אוכלוסייה אזרחית לעבר אוכלוסייה אזרחית. כפי שישראל נחושה להביא לשקט וליציבות, כך נהיה נחושים לפגוע בכל מטרה צבאית של חמאס וארגוני הטרור המאיימים על אזרחי ישראל. העולם כולו צריך להיחשף לפשעים שמבצעת חמאס ולגבות ממנה את המחיר הכבד כבר היום. Israel's latest exposure of Hamas's placement of military infrastructure within civilian neighborhoods is nothing new, nor is the deafening silence emanating from the international fora. Rather than condemning Hamas for its repeated breaches of international law, a UN Security Council meeting on the Middle East focused on the implementation of Resolution 2334, which was adopted on the 23rd of December of 2016, in which it defined Israeli settlements built on what the document refers to as Palestinian territories occupied since 1967, including East Jerusalem, as illegal and an obstacle to peace. I reiterate that all settlements are illegal under international law and remain a substantial obstacle to peace. The Palestinian envoy to the world body for his part seized the opportunity to once again urge the international community to protect the Palestinian people and their aspirations for statehood. There are two tasks that cannot be deferred nor delayed. Providing protection to the Palestinian people, and we are working with the SG in this regard and his teams, and, and preserving the two-state solution on the 1967 borders. If there is to be a different future, then this is what needs to happen in the present. Israel's ambassador to the United Nations for his part highlighted the ineffective activities by the Security Council's approach towards the decades-old Palestinian-Israel conflict, all the while asserting 
that the deeply divided Palestinian leadership does not constitute a genuine partner for peace. We take a century-old conflict and put it under a super microscope to analyze its most useless and insignificant aspects, rather than see the big picture and look for real solutions to our real problems. Sadly, nothing noteworthy has been achieved as a result of these debates. Nothing for decades. Israel today doesn't even have a possible partner for negotiations as President Abbas doesn't represent all of Palestinian society. Nevertheless, despite the heinous actions of Hamas, this council remains silent. Among the dignitaries addressing the council, China's deputy ambassador to the United Nations stressed Beijing's policy vis-à-vis -vis the Israel-Palestinian conflict.第三，推进两国方案刻不容缓。中方呼吁召开更大规模、更有权威、更具影响的国际和会，邀请安理会常任理事国和所有中东和平进程攸关方参与，探索政治解决。Deputy Ambassador Geng continued by highlighting China's role in the Middle East, all the while asserting its intention to deepen its regional role. It is worth noting that Chinese President Xi Jinping held a phone conversation with his Iranian counterpart Ibrahim Raisi over the weekend, during which the two leaders discussed promotion of the China-Iran Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and other issues of common concern. According to the Chinese president's office, President Xi told his Iranian counterpart that in the face of international complexities, China and Iran have strengthened solidarity and cooperation, enhanced their common interests and safeguarded the legitimate rights and interests of developing countries. Moreover, the Chinese president underscored that Beijing views its relations with Tehran from a strategic height and stands ready to work with the Islamic Republic to push for new progress in the development of the comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries. President Raisi, for his part, stressed that unwaveringly deepening the comprehensive partnership with China is a priority and focus of Iran's established foreign policy, all the while pledging to firmly adhere to the One China policy and to firmly support Beijing in safeguarding its core interests. Meanwhile, in Tehran, the Iranian foreign ministry asserted that any new sanctions imposed against it by the United States would further impede on Western efforts to revive the 2015 nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic. ایجاد یک مانع جدید در روند بازگشت همه طرف به توافق هست و ما حتما متناسب با هر اقدام دولت آمریکا اقدامات خودمون رو تنظیم می کنیم. While the Iranian foreign ministry repeatedly stated in recent weeks that it is in no rush to revive the so-called JCPOA, renewed attempts by EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell to reinvigorate the stall negotiations may soon bear fruit. بعد از تبادل پیام ها و دیدگاه هایی که در روزهای اخیر رخ داد و در هفته گذشته رخ داد و بررسی هایی که روی متون پیشنهادی انجام گرفت این احتمال وجود داره که ما در آینده نزدیک بتونیم در خصوص تعیین زمان مذاکرات هم به یک نتیجه برسیم و احتمالا دور جدیدی از مذاکرات رو شاهد باشیم جمهوری اسلامی ایران دستیابی به توافق رو یک راهبرد جدی میدونه به مذاکرات تاکتیکی نگاه نمیکنه و معتقده که دستیابی به توافق میتونه هم منافع ما و هم منافع طرفهای 
توافق رو ان شاء الله تضمین بکنه. Well, the Iranians are seemingly willing to engage in yet another round of talks. During the last week's State Department press briefing, Ned Price noted that the EU's proposal was not based on any new initiative. We will be in touch directly, and we have been in touch directly with our European uh, partners on this. We're reviewing that. Uh, we'll convey any feedback directly uh, to our European allies in this case. But it is our understanding uh, that the proposal that uh, Mr. Burrell put forward uh, was based on the deal that has been on the table that was painstakingly negotiated uh, among the P5 plus one and the deal that we have been prepared to accept since March for months now. Price further reiterated that the Iranians were responsible for the holdup in reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement, all the while stressing that the United States is preparing itself for any scenario. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News as we have returned to our regular broadcast schedule today. It is crucial for us, of course, to also highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.